Second, before we get into anything else, we, we should just make a point. Look, we've been doing this show now for five years. I've been doing this for 30 years. There is not a better teammate or friend or analyst than Jeff Saturday. His, his, his role here was unbelievable, and should he ever want it back, his seat will always be waiting for him. Marcus, a quick thought on our buddy Saturday, who will no longer be a Tuesday staple with us, at least for the time being. Yeah, happy for Jeff to get this opportunity. Um, you know, he's a, he's a football guy, and you know that Jeff wants to take this challenge head on. But, G, like, we, we got a responsibility. This is not a good look for the NFL. It's not a good look for the Indianapolis Colts. And I know this is an interim head coaching uh, job. It's not – Jeff hasn't been hired over a long-term contract, so we're talking about a different thing. But my mind went to, beyond being happy for Jeff, because two things can be true, my mind immediately went to – well, what about the coaches that are in that organization already mm -hmm. that are left there uh, based on everybody that you fired? And, look, I know that everybody talks about this automatic credibility, and I'm sure guys in the NFL respect us as old, like older guys and guys that's been on television and out of the locker room, but there are relationships that are built in that locker room with certain coaches as well where players might say, why didn't my position coach get this opportunity? Why mm -hmm. would we bring in Jeff Saturday, who's been on television for the last few years, to come in and be the, head, the interim head coach when dudes have been in the trenches with us since training camp, they've been in the trenches with us since mini camp, and they brought, they, we, we in a season where we're struggling, give somebody this opportunity from within. So I don't want it to be misconstrued. I know Jeff Saturday, love him. And that's why I'm happy for him in particular. But this is not a good look for all of the coaches that put in work to get these opportunities to audition to potentially become head coaches. I hope Jeff sets it off. I hope he has success. I hope he can get some wins under his belt. But ultimately, this is a bad look for the Indianapolis coach. And this is a bad look for the NFL. And for Ursay to say, I'm glad he don't have no experience. <laughs> what the hell are we talking about? <laughs> like, who don't want experience to come in and try to lead a group of men that's not only battling <laughs> for their jobs, but battling to try to win games and pull themselves out of a season? I hate we had to go here because we all should be applauding Jeff and having a good time. But respectfully, this is a bad decision by the Indianapolis coach, Ursay, and the NFL. This is not a good look for coaches that are fighting and battling to get jobs. And I ain't talking about just black head coaches. Dan Campbell was a head coach, I mean, was a coach in this league fighting to get a job before he was hired as the head coach in Detroit. This is out of the blue, and I'm sure a lot of guys within the NFL ranks who have been coaching this season and battling for potential opportunities, even within that coach organization, are disappointed by this. Yeah, I, I think that's well said. And, and as you said, both can be true. We can be happy for Jeff and Absolutely. still raise an eyebrow at the situation. You've known him longer than anybody. Yeah, no, I've known Jeff for more than a decade. We've been through the trenches of CBA negotiations. He's someone who I sincerely love, and uh, he's the most integrity of anybody I've ever met, and I know that he Absolutely. will be a great leader, and I do think that he will succeed there. But to Marcus's point, we would not be meeting our responsibility if we let our biases creep in and pretend like this is something that's normal and something that should not be called into question. The thing about black coaches is out there, but I think what Marcus brings up the great point, any coach around the league is looking at this, particularly the former head coaches that are on that staff are probably looking at this a bit confused. This, what is, this is what it feels like to be a black head coach. Now you know what it feels like to be a black or black potential coach, where you're sitting around and you watch someone else who does not have the qualifications that you have because of a relationship that they have, they go to the front of the line. And again, I think Jeff will succeed. I am going to be rooting harder for the Colts than I've ever rooted for any team yes. in my life because I love him and I want him to succeed. But also, we have to call into question the process and understand that Jim Mercer pretty much said it. He was like, this is my guy. <laughs> I brought him in because he's my guy. And that's the, like the, the network that it's hard, so hard to break into for black coaches. But right now, this one isn't about black coaches. This is about all coaches. He also said he doesn't know how to make sausage, which I'm not 100% sure why that was relevant to anything. But uh, we should point out, Mike, that there are two uh, coaches on that staff with previous head coaching experience, right? John Fox is on that staff and Gus Bradley is on that staff. So when the owner says, I'm glad he doesn't have any coaching experience, it's almost as though he is speaking directly at those two people. Yeah, and that's going to be job one for Jeff Sari is to win them over. And uh, I had the privilege of representing Steve Kerr, and I spent a year with him getting him ready to become a head coach, and obviously the rest is history. He's done an incredible job with the Warriors, and I think there are some parallels. Jeff has incredible intelligence, leadership, and relatability, but with that, what Neek and uh, Swagoo both said, which is 
he has to go in there and earn everyone's trust from day one that they, like, for the last eight games, he could take them to where they want to go. Jonathan Taylor has a bad ankle. There's going to be free agents. Coaches have hopes, dreams, and insecurities, and he has to lead men and convince them that he can help them get to where they want to go. And that's really hard to do on such short notice. And we also hired Dan Campbell, and Dan was a tight end coach, and he was our coach for 12 games. I can tell you, like, my own job changed dramatically because you have to walk through every day, here are the decisions, here's medical, here's mm. PR. I, I promise you, if Jeff was here a week from today, his head will be spinning because there's some things he doesn't even know what to even ask about. Yeah, and to do it in season, too. Look, everything everybody says is – is, is true and they're good points. We, we've seen it before, right? The New York Yankees hired Aaron Boone out of the broadcast booth mm -hmm. at ESPN to be their manager. He had no experience. You know, it, it can, and I'm sure that was part of his, when he arrived, explaining himself. And Jeff said that at the press conference last night. They asked him, do you have to win over the locker room? And he said, yeah, not only that, but the coaches, right? Like, so it, he gets it. Look, we, we, I, I'm, I'll add real quick, like just to everything everybody said, one of my favorite people I've ever worked with, a friend for life, I hope, uh, and, and I do hope he does well. Oh, I can't wait to riff him when he messes and, up. And he's got two Monday <laughs> night games coming the rest of the year, and we got Tuesday shows, oh. and, and we're going to just tee him up, and it's going to be great. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.